Hello. Uh, I'm glad that you decided to uh, join me today and uh, hope that this word encourages your heart, uh, that it teaches, uh, that it uh, instructs us and builds us up in, in holiness and righteousness. And what we're going to talk about today is condemnation. And uh, I'm going to be reading from a couple of different places in the scripture and in the book of John, uh, third chapter, and also in Romans chapter 8. And so in, in speaking about condemnation, uh, we all uh, come into this world and, of course, uh, we, we, we fall into condemnation based, uh, based upon our own sin. And, you know, that's the first thing that, uh, that any person has to realize in their life is, is that there is sin in the heart. There's sin in, in, in as, as, as persons. And, and the Bible, Bible clearly makes that, uh, makes that seen and understood. And, and we, we uh, you know, as, as we come to uh, understand that, as we come to uh, see the truth of God's Word, we, we see that. I mean, we see that in our hearts. And, and uh, as both uh, as, as Christians, we see that is that we continue to battle against this flesh. But, you know, the other side is those that are not Christians, those that have not uh, come to, to know Jesus at this point, uh, that, uh, you know, that, that's, that's the first step, really. Uh, you know, is is coming to understand the, the sinfulness. Uh, the Bible talks about a couple of things. It, it says, you know, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So it makes it makes it clear that everybody is it falls under that. There's no exceptions. There's not somebody that says, well, you know, I'm I, I've done all right. And it, it just doesn't exist out there. And and uh, it's it's uh, it's it's clearly seen. Uh, when you get on the other side of the cross and you and you come before God and you and you repent, you, uh, you you place your trust in the in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Uh, boy, I tell you, every day uh, the 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 condition of the man's heart it becomes more and more clear, and especially our own hearts, and understanding the the sinfulness uh, of this of this fleshly nature. And so we're going to talk about condemnation in that, and um, uh, the you know the scripture and in, in speaking of that also and in, in speaking of sin, is that one of one of my favorite scriptures that speaks about that is found in Jeremiah in the seventeenth chapter in the ninth verse, and it says that the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things, uh, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And I think that describes us. We have a deceitful and wicked heart, and that's what uh, we're, we're we come into this world, and that's the nature that's in this flesh because of Adam, because of the fall of Adam, that we've all inherited that same nature. And uh, while I wish that uh, you know, I just pray that that uh, every person could come to understand that, come to understand the the sinfulness of of this flesh, and uh, and as Peter said when when. Uh, he, he preached a great sermon in, in, uh, on the day of Pentecost, and they said, the people that were convicted there said, "What must we do to be saved? What you know? What do we? What are we going to do about this this deceitful and wicked heart?" And he said, "Repent." And then he said, "Trust to the Lord Jesus Christ uh, for the forgiveness of sin." And that's uh, that's what we have to do is we have to first of all understand the the sinfulness of this heart and. And even when we come to Christ, even when we come to Jesus and trust in His blood and in His finished work, we still understand that we have this fallen nature, this, this body of death that we live with, and that uh, we have to deal with that on a daily basis. And that's a battle that we have on a daily basis. But in speaking of condemnation, uh, this, is what, this is what John chapter 3 says. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And he all goes on to say, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him that they might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness more 
than the, and more than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen and that they have been done in God. And so the scripture talks about that that condemnation comes as a result of, of this of light being there and the fact that we that we don't want to come to light because of the, the, the evilness in our heart. The darkness that's within us and we don't want to come to, to that. And so that's the condemnation is that uh, God has freely given uh, forgiveness through Jesus Christ. He's fr freely given the light and the truth of Christ and the salvation that's found in Him. Yet, because men love darkness, because men wanted rather had lived wanted to live in their own way and in their own darkness and their own evil and the in the ways of this world more than than Christ. And that's that's a sad fact that there's many people in that today. And my heart's desire, my prayer is that um, if you're there today, if you're there today, if you hear this and that your heart is is not right with God, that you just simply repent and say, God, I, I've I've been doing wrong. I've missed it, and and I need to turn. I need to repent, and repent is just turning from from your own ways and turning to God and to the truth of God, because God is 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 standing ready and ready and willing to forgive. Through the blood of Christ, because that's that's exactly why that Jesus gave up His glory with God from the beginning and came to this earth, that He might fully fulfill the righteous requirement of God, and so that we, through that substitutionary death uh, in His life, live holy and righteous before God. And so there is condemnation to those who are not in Christ Jesus. And whether you realize it or not, or whether you think, well, I've, I've lived a, you know, a, a fairly decent life, it doesn't matter. Without Jesus, uh, there is condemnation. And if those that reject Jesus will uh, not only live in condemnation on this earth, but in eternity uh, face the wrath and the darkness uh, that exists there. Uh, and so I just, I pray that, uh, that if for some reason that you've never come to that point in your life that you fully surrendered that you do that today and so to come out of that condemnation now sometimes we the other side of that is that we as Christians can also live in condemnation and that's not a result of God's condemnation that's a result of condemnation of the enemy the accuser it's also a, a result of the condemnation that we have within ourselves because we can't ever come to the point that we, with with our, the renewal of our mind, uh, come to understand that we are fully uh, uh, accepted before God, that God loves us, and that He doesn't love us because somehow that we became uh, this uh, holy person uh, by our faith in Christ, because we can, we can never satisfy God by our own righteousness. It'll never happen. And if we, if we try to do that, if we try to live... Uh, before God and say, God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be obedient in everything, and and when we do, when we don't, because our aim, our aim as Christians should be to be obedient and be righteous in every way. That should be our aim. That should be our desire, and that's that's what I mean. We want to do that because uh, not just not just to be fully pleasing to God is in that way, but also to understand that that's that's our nature. So, so anyway, we've got fighting dogs this morning. But anyway, to to live, to live a holy life, to live in a life that um, is fully pleasing to God. And what what I was saying is, is that we can't please Him. We can't please Him uh, in our own righteousness. We're pleasing to Him in our faith in Christ Jesus. And that's what uh, Paul speaks about over in in Romans chapter eight, verse one. He says, "There is therefore now," and he's speaking about. He's speaking about the present, but he's speaking about the position that we're in. The position is, is that there is therefore now those that are in Christ Jesus he's speaking of. That's the now he's speaking of, is those whose lives are hidden in Christ, who have come to the cross, who've repented, who've under, come to understand the sinfulness of the heart, 
and that man is, uh, you know, that we have a deceitful and wicked heart, and that uh, above all, that uh, we are we are totally depraved. That's that's who we are. That's the nature, and we've come to that point. We've understood that, and we've come and we've surrendered that old life, and we've we've laid that life down, and we've taken up the new life of Christ. That's the position. There is therefore now to those who are in that position, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So, in other words, that we no longer we no longer are walking according to our own ways. We're not we're no longer walking absent of the life of Christ living within us, but we're we're walking with the presence of the Holy Spirit, because that's the now. That's the Holy Spirit living within us. That, that, that is that difference, that's that transformation point. And Paul makes it clear, he says, there is therefore now, to those who are in Christ Jesus, no condemnation. And we need to come to understand that, because we can live in condemnation of, of both past things that were before the cross and things that have happened after the cross uh, in, our, in, in our experience and with our life in Christ, is that we can still live in condemnation of those things. And, and, and Christ doesn't want us to live there. Now, that doesn't mean that, that we're not going to have conviction in our life because we have conviction about things that says that, you know what, God has convicted me of certain things. And, and as, as God begins, uh, continues to transform our hearts and our minds and to sanctify us into his kingdom, is that we, uh, there's things in our life that are going to, you know, it's kind of like an onion. Because you just continue to get peeled off in that uh, that that maybe yesterday we didn't really have a conviction about that, but today we do have a conviction about that, and that can be a, a, all sorts of things. But as we as God convicts us of things, that's just the training up, and that just says that we need to put that off. But you know, there's going to be certain sins that are going to trip us up. There's going to be sins that are going to trip us up, and and we're going to we're going to come before God, and we're going to we're going to repent, and we're going to say, God, I'm sorry, and. And that, you know, never want to do that again. And, 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 and true from the heart that we don't want to do those again. But you know what? Sometimes you trip over that sin again. But you have to keep coming and saying, Lord, deliver me. And you know, I believe that God does deliver us. I believe that in everything that he delivers us, uh, you know, from faith to faith, that God is, is faithful for that. And that, you know, from, from each step that we take, God is faithful in that. But he doesn't want us to live in condemnation because we're not under God's condemnation. We're not under God's wrath. But God has chosen us to be faithful before him and that we are his elect, adopted into his family uh, forever there. And that's, that's why I want to encourage you today, uh, don't, uh, don't find yourself in condemnation. Don't, don't let yourself live in that. Uh, and if you, if you have condemnation in your heart, uh, bring it before God and just say, God, I understand uh, that that you know things are wrong, and that that's that body of flesh that I have. But I want my desires to live righteous before You, and I believe that uh, that as You do so, as You read God's Word, and and that You come to understand the truth of God's Word, and that Your mind is renewed, and that Your mind is renewed to the truth. And that, that old casting, casting crowns song that the voice of truth uh, comes and speaks. And that's, that's, the, that's the word of God. The, the word of God is what renews us. And he says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the spirit uh, of Christ, uh, for the law of the spirit of Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. In other words, we couldn't, um, we can't fulfill the law. We can't uh, live according to the righteous requirements of God's law. We missed the mark, and because of that, uh, God, by sending His Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, on the account of sin, He condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So the, the righteous requirement of God is that we fulfill His law, right? And so uh, in, in that that was weak in the flesh, in other words, the flesh cannot do it because we have a sinful flesh, uh, God uh, fulfilled it in the Spirit. And what He means is that through Christ Jesus, 
through the, the, the work of Christ, the righteous requirement was fulfilled when Jesus came and did that. And so that is our faith in what Christ has done. And that's where we place our faith. And we can only do that as, as we are uh, come to understand the, the, the depravity of sin in our lives and we repent before God and that we place our trust and we place our, our whole life in every decision and, and every part of what we are. It doesn't mean that, that it's a Sunday morning thing on, on coming to church that we say, all right, well, I'm going to you know, kind of come to church and that's going to fulfill my duty and that. It's, it's not that at all. Being part of a church is very important, but the most important thing is that, that personal decision that, that uh, understanding of, of that our life is hidden, is enveloped in Christ, and that it's no longer our life. In every aspect of our life, our, our personal life, our thoughts, our job, our finances, everything, our children, all then become, uh, you know, everything, every decision that we make, uh, every, every part of our life, is based upon fulfilling God's will in our life. And, and we have to seek Him out for that. Because if we're not doing that, we haven't fully surrendered to His Lordship. Because it's not, not salvation is not just, well, God's forgiven me of sins and, and I'm looking forward to going to heaven. It's, it's, it's life now. It's, it's here on this earth. And it's eternal life. And so God's desire is for us to live a, an obedient life and that we're, we trust in Him and that we continue to grow in the knowledge of grace of, of, of Jesus every day. And so don't live in condemnation. Don't live in condemnation of your own sin because uh, that's, that has been put away as we live in the Spirit, as we are obedient to God. For it comes down here, it says in the last part, For you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, it is not him. So, if we don't have the Spirit of Christ, we're still in that condemnation. But those that have the Spirit of Christ, when we are born again and God seals us with the Spirit of Christ, we're no longer in the flesh, but we're in the Spirit, and therefore not under the condemnation of God. So, I hope this encourages you. I hope that you can freely get up and rejoice and, and know that God loves you abundantly above all things. He accepts you as who you are. And that he wants to continue to work in your life. For the Bible says that he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it against that day. Be blessed, my beloved. Goodbye.